Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Batwoman Season 3 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 8, Trust Destiny, which I have just finished watching. And this actually marked the official live-action Arrowverse debut of Poison Ivy. Now, over the course of this season, going all the way back to the end of Season 2... They have been hinting at Poison Ivy's presence for quite some time and we've been hearing the stories about Poison Ivy is eventually going to be making her Arrowverse debut but it was just a question of when she was going to be appearing. So we finally got to see Poison Ivy in the flesh, no pun intended, but however it was mostly in flashback which was still a good thing. And we got to see a little bit of her past relationship with Officer Renee Montoya. And I thought the way they handled Poison Ivy was pretty well done, in my opinion. She didn't have the classic lime green skin that we all know her for. She did wear a dark green, red leather motif sort of attire which in my opinion looked quite sexy. However, I remember talking to a friend the other day. I felt Poison Ivy looked a bit old. Not too old, but I always remember Poison Ivy being quite youthful looking, quite petite, yeah, and very, very curvy. This Poison Ivy was really tall, very leggy. Nothing wrong with that. But I thought they did a pretty good job with um, Poison Ivy. I thought Bridget Regan did an excellent job portraying Poison Ivy for the few scenes that she had. So hopefully this means we will eventually see Poison Ivy in a bigger role later on in the season. And if the ending is anything to go by, we will probably get that at some point. And also another thing as well in this episode was Marcus, the brother of Ryan Wilder, it's starting to look like they're gearing up for him to be the new Joker for the show, or at least in the Arrowverse, because we all remember that Luke mentioned that the Joker died many years ago at the hands of Batman. Still not really too sure about that, but kind of looks like they're going for that in Batwoman. Marcus could be the new Joker, but time will tell, really. But I'll give him credit. You know, this Marcus character as the new Joker has potential. Now, until I see him fall into a vat of chemicals with his skin bleached and puts on the iconic purple suit that we all know, I'm not going to buy into him as the Joker. Could he be a crazed crime boss? Absolutely. Love that stuff. But to be the iconic Joker villain? Eh, well, we'll see, really. But they're definitely teasing madness with him. So that's something I enjoy. So time will tell, really. But overall, I thought this was a pretty decent episode. A couple of little moments were a bit clunky. I'm really enjoying... The relationship development with Mary Hamilton and Alice, played superbly as always by Nicole Kang and the lovely Rachel Scarston, who always knocks it out of the park. And I think with these two, they have the potential to be the new Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy of the Arrowverse. And we are starting to see them becoming a bit more closer, like a sisterly sort of bonds they've got going on here. And... You know, Alice, as we all know, she does things her own way. She always marches to the beat of her own drum. And she doesn't really care or have time for anyone, especially for Mary, of all people. But we saw over the course of this episode, spending loads of cash, drinking, eating, and just doing what Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy have always been doing, going all the way back to Batman and the Animated Series. So... I'm digging it, you know, I'm absolutely digging it, you know, these two, even though they didn't have much scenes together, 
they were always the highlight for me. And once again, they um, delivered as always. But as I said, overall, this episode, pretty good. And looks like we are finally going to get Poison Ivy as the main villain, going by the way this episode ended. The idea of Poison Ivy having a relationship with the name Montoya, I don't know really. I mean, we all know in the comic books, Renee Montoya had a relationship with Kate Kane. Obviously, we didn't get that here because, well, you know why. But it is interesting, but it's something I could probably do without. And also another thing as well that I had a little issue with is everybody knowing Bruce Wayne is Batman. Not really a fan of that. Bruce Wayne... My Bruce Wayne, no one knows he's Batman other than a couple of very close friends or associates. The idea they just casually throw it out and say, oh, Bruce Wayne's Batman. And Renee Montoy find that out in this episode. Yeah, didn't dig that much. But aside from the little issues, this was still a good, solid episode and quite enjoyable. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode eight trust destiny so this episode starts off with a flashback going all the way back 10 years where we see cops are responding to poison ivy attacking police officers and we see two officers one of them being renee montoya arrive on the scene and tell her to stand down we see poison ivy actually make her presence known and we actually physically do see her now after being hinted at for most of the first half of this season. She takes out one of the officers with a thorny vine and she shouts to um, Renee Montoya that she's doing this because there's someone you care about. And she asks Poison Ivy, why are you doing this? And she says, because someone has to care about Mother Nature. So good start to the introduction for Poison Ivy in the Arrowverse. And then we cut to the present day where we see Mary is doing Alice's nails in a trashed hotel room where we see hotel management comes in and tells Mary that all of her credit cards have been declined and she's racked up an $8,000 tab <laughs> and has been asked to leave. We then see Mary uses the pheromone hypnotism of Poison Ivy's abilities and tells them that this has all been a misunderstanding and we get a shot of her eyes glowing green and we see the management tells her to take all the time they need and they leave the room. Mary asks Alice what she should do and she tells her to kill them immediately and she tells her to make her friends hate her so much that they want to give her up. So it's kind of interesting you know initially it looked like Alice was just manipulating Mary but now she's actually wants her on her side and is actually slowly corrupting her. So pretty good stuff here. And it's kind of cool to see Mary in a villainous sort of role. And, you know, Nicole Kane, she's just knocking it out of the park. You know, after nearly three seasons of being a little innocent doctor who always likes to have a good time. It's really good to see her getting into a much serious, bigger role with plenty of good screen time to get her teeth into. So love it. We then see Renee's in a room with Pam Lysley, who's holding white tulips. I think this is another flashback. Renee says she could have died and she was supposed to have his back. Renee says that she doesn't recognise her anymore. And Renee tells her to go back to being the brilliant scientist that she fell in love with a decade ago. And we then see Poison Ivy says that person is gone. She has blossomed into something who can stand up to herself. And more importantly, those things I can't do as Pamela Isley. We then see Luke has the spinning wheel of death on his computer and is frustrated. And Renee is there and she is frustrated that Mary's clinic is overrun by plant life. And Ryan says they won't let her forget who she is. And Renee tells her to take off the kid gloves and do what's necessary. Sophie says Renee is not wrong. They need a hard stance against Mary. Ryan tells her that she's not going to agree with a woman who's blackmailing her just because she's having a fling with her. <laughs> Luke feels awkward and wants out of there. Renee says that she has sold her soul to Batman as he knew that Batman couldn't trust 
Arkham to contain poison ivy, so he develops a defactation serum that will extract the ivy, but he only made one dose. Ryan says that if they were supposed to use the serum on Mary, it will dehydrate her to the point of death. Sophie says this may be the only way they could save Mary. Ryan is, of course, against it, but gives him a Luke says, I'm a win. Ryan asks Renee if she were Batman, where would I hide Poison Ivy? And then we see Ryan gets a call from Marcus in full Joker eccentric-like behaviour. He tells her that he is redecorating his office and then she tells him that he should be in jail and he needs a, a help from doctors. He tells her that a tiny part of her loves him or she would have had him thrown in Arkham by now. And now he feels more alive than ever and she will be hearing from him soon. And he hangs up on the phone and shouts out, that, get ready Gotham, I'm coming for all of you. Ryan goes and tells Sophie that she thinks Marcus is throwing a party at Wayne Enterprises tonight and they're going to crash it. Oh, here we go. So we see the party as a mask masquerade and help Sophie and Ryan and Luke conceal their identity. And Marcus plays a game of sorts with the people who attended the party. And if they answer questions incorrectly, he zaps them with electricity. Ouch. Sophie, Renee and Ryan make their way upstairs where the men are playing pool. They push the door open and call themselves the cleaning ladies and take them all out with pool cues and other bits of furniture as well. Nice. Very Charlie's Angels. Meanwhile, Mary arrives at the party in full Poison Ivy mode and walks straight up to Marcus and he tells her that her friends no longer live here. We then see the ladies are going over some of Bruce Wayne's old notes and Renee tells Ryan that what happened to Pam, what happened to Mary, wasn't a fair fight. We then see Pam is packing her bags in another flashback where Renee asks her if she knows anything about the breaking that's got from Dan. Pam says that she wants to save Gotham from being a toxic waste dump and she wants her to support her while she does it. Pam tells her that she wants her but she needs to trust what she is doing is the right thing. And Re Renee says, this tulip is for you and Pam says, what's this for? And we see Renee stab with the serum says, for forgiveness. And Pam falls down to the ground as we see her slowly vegetate. Ugh. They think that Pam is in the tunnels under the bat's cave. Ren Renee suits up to try and narrow in on the heartbeat. And we see Ryan in her bat suit go after Pam's heartbeat. And she contacts Luke and tells him that they believe that they found poison ivy somewhere in the lower tunnels of the bat cave. We then see Mary is dancing with Marcus and tells him that maybe he wants to take revenge on Ryan on her behalf. She whispers in his ear and looks very shocked. Oh boy. We then see Batswoman Sophie and Renee are in the tunnels and she gets a message from Luke saying something is going on with Mary. And just then Sophie sees something and Batswoman starts digging. They find Pamela Isu's body. Renee tells Batswoman that Mary is at the party and the serum is here. It's time to step up and she uses a device to withdraw the serum from Pam's body. We also see somebody has frauded Sophie's credit card and it turns out to be none other than Alice in another fantastic scene delivered by Rachel Scarsden who is holding up at the hotel and she heads over there where Sophie knocks the door open and Alice says oh it's about time. Alice tells her that Renee has been playing them and she needs to be punished for being a bad liar. Luke has also been found out by Marcus. Batwoman has the serum and finds Mary and just as she's about to stab it with her, she walks up to Marcus and stabs it him instead. Poison Ivy gets away. She goes back to the hotel and tells Alice that Batwoman was about to inject her and didn't. She used the syringe on Marcus instead. In that moment, Mary was the least of her problems and Alice says she underestimated her. We then see Renee sitting down inside the tunnel speaking to Pam when a tulip starts to grow. Renee kisses the corpse and we see the corpse's eyes spring wide open. Sophie breaks into an office to get the proof about Renee. Luke has Marcus on a table and trying to save him. Sophie calls Luke and tells them that Renee has been lying to them the whole time. She just wanted to be reunited with her soulmate. Pamela Isley and that's how we end episode eight overall I thought this was a pretty good solid episode 
couple of little clunky moments here and there, but by and large, this was very good, very enjoyable, and I thought the way they handled Poison Ivy's Arrowverse debut was very well done. Looking forward to seeing more of her, and hopefully we'll get to see the classic Poison Ivy look that we all know and love. But I thought this was a very good episode. So that's going to be it for me. I am going to wrap this up now. What was your thoughts on episode eight? Did you enjoy it? What was your thoughts on Mary revealing Batwoman's secret identity to Marcus? Do you think she can ever be trusted again, even if she does go back to normal? And also, what was your thoughts on Poison Ivy in this episode? Do you think they handled her Arrowverse debut very well? And also, what was your thoughts on the past relationship with Renee Montoya? Do you think that was handled well? And do you think we might learn a little bit more about their past relationship? And also, do you think they'll be able to save Marcus? And if he is revived, what will he do with this information now that he knows the truth about Ryan Wilder and her secret identity? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Batwoman Season 3 Review Series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 9, which I am looking forward to talking about, especially with the way this one ended. So should be a really good episode. Can't wait. So until next time, Take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.